Hello. Today I wanted to talk about spirituality. And I thought about, oh, maybe I should put on makeup and lipstick and do my hair perfect, not show my starting to go gray. But the truth is, none of that's necessary. A lot of us feel that it is. And of course, you know, I probably wouldn't make this video right when I rolled out of bed. And I would probably brush my hair, which I did before doing this. <laughs> but I wanted to come to you in a raw, natural state. Not saying that in the future I might not will put on lip gloss. I usually don't wear makeup, but who knows, you know, one day I may. We never know. The last time I did wear makeup was for a wedding for a friend a few years ago. Um, but this isn't about makeup. <laughs> I just wanted to touch on that. I wanted to come to you as I am because a lot of people think that there are these conditions to be spiritual and there aren't. Spirituality, it's who you are. It's the raw nature of your true self. You are spirit. You're walking on this earth in your everyday life just like I am. We're all here just living our daily lives and making the best of it. And some of us might think that we have this grand mission, but the truth is our mission is just to live peacefully every day with each other. One of the greatest things we can do is be community, live in community. I know I've been on several retreats where I felt at home because I was there with community. We may not have talked <laughs> because that it was a silent retreat, but it felt like we were. we were. We were all communicating in some way or another. We were all there to better ourselves, to work on ourselves, to be our true selves. And even if we're not perfect in doing that, that's okay. If we were perfect, we wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't be existing on this planet. We would be somewhere else in a different dimension doing other things. And we're here to be the love that we naturally are but we forget because we fall into this density of this planet and we forget what we truly are and learning to not be caught up in our senses and material possessions that's when you start seeing your true self really you start realizing that you don't need everything. You don't have to have the nicest, fanciest things. You don't have to be the best and not everybody has to know your name and know who you are and look to you and it's not necessary. What's really necessary is what goes on internally, inside yourself, each and every day. What you do with that, how you look at it, do you look at it? One of the main things we do in Zen meditation is look at your mind. What is it doing? Are we aware of what it's doing? Do we watch it? Or do we just continue on autopilot and pay no attention? Because a lot of us do that. I did that for many years. But for many years now, I've done something else, which was look at the mind and look at who I truly am. And it's made me realize that being spiritual is something we all are. If you think about it, Jesus walked among all of us. He walked among the poor, the rich, the proud, the meek. He walked among all of us because he knew that we all have that spirit, that true nature inside of us. You know, many people will say that Jesus walked with the Tao and he gave Tao blessings. You know, the Buddha, he knew it too. 
One of the last things he, his, of his teachings that he said was, and now forget everything I taught you. Because he knew that once we get past our conditioning and our conditioned mind, the true nature is always there. You know, for some of us, this might look like sitting in meditation for days and days and days. And for others, some people don't know how to meditate. I've run into so many people that have been told, you know, you should meditate. But they're like, I've never meditated. I don't know how to do that. And they don't know how to quiet their minds. The best advice that I've ever given to anyone like that is five minutes. Start with five minutes. Just sit there and be quiet for five minutes. Watch your thoughts. Allow them to pass. Allow them to be what they are. It's called the monkey mind, the beginner's mind. And technically, we always want to have a beginner's mind because we're all here learning each and every day. None of us are better than anyone else. We are who we are and we are that spirit expressing. One of the most beautiful things is when we live in community and we cooperate in community. I'm so grateful because right now, for the last two years, I've been living in a very nice community. And I haven't talked about spirituality with people, but at least not in this community. But what I have talked about is everyday life everyday life and our struggles our hurts our pains our love our care and our connections and just being and doing and loving love in action that's what it's about and we forget about it so quickly because we get so wrapped up in what we want what we desire what we feel like we need to have what we need to do Need, need, want, want, craving, craving, attachment. And it's so easy to sit here and say those things. But I think to really live a, a spiritual life, I feel like we already are doing that every day. You know, simple things like when I'm cooking a meal, I put love into that meal. And I think about the love that I'm cultivating and I think about how others can receive that love. And all they have to do is just be. And others can give that love. And all they have to do is just be. We can look deeper into ourselves as time goes on if we choose to. Some of us are maybe meant you know, to live these um, strong spiritual lives where we are constantly you know, moving forward, progressing, some might achieve enlightenment, things like that. But the truth is, we already are enlightened. It's just dropping our beliefs that we cling to so tightly, and our limitations, our fears, our frustrations. It all stems from fear. When we're afraid, we can't move forward. When we're afraid, we can't grow. It's like we're paralyzed and we're stuck. And we don't have to be that way. We can choose to look deeper and see more. We can choose in that moment of anger to breathe, to take that breath, to hold and let it out. Our breath is so powerful but we don't know it because we automatically take in the breath and we automatically exhale and that's great that's awesome we can't hold any more than we can take in we can't give any more than we can receive we can't receive any more than we give emptiness is form and form is emptiness we are everything we've ever needed and all we have to do is look inside so many years I searched outside myself I thought happiness would come from outside I thought connecting with so many people and doing so many things and constantly being busy was the answer to being happy but it wasn't 
And it took me a long time to figure that out. So now I've decided to start making videos. <laughs> so many people make videos out there, right? And I thought about, oh, you know what? I'll write down what I'm going to talk about. But no, I just came out here, stood by this beautiful tree and decided to start talking from my heart. I didn't need to get all fancy. I didn't need to be something I'm not. I just needed to be me. I've had such deep, profound experiences and I'd like for you to fully understand them. But that's not so easy because Many of us, we need to have our own experiences to understand something, to truly resonate with it, to integrate it, to be with it, to be it. So many of us can tell us, you know, I've had this experience and I did this and I did that. Well, that's great. And I love listening to it. And that's awesome. And it's important to listen and be respectful. But we have to have our own experiences, our own internal experiences to truly transform into the love that we truly are. Because we've had so many layers of conditioning put around us by ourselves, maybe by others, I don't know your scenario, but we do all impact each other. And that's why community is so important. You know, some call it Sangha some call it Christian family, whatever you call it, it's the same thing. It's people connecting all over the world with the way that technology is now. We have Zoom calls, we have social media, we have more connections than we've ever had. And yet, right now in the world, there's more fear than there's ever been, at least in recent times that I am aware of. I'm not saying all of history because <laughs> that would be a bold statement. <laughs> but many people are afraid. You know, they're raising kids. They don't know what the future looks like. They're raising kids who've been, you know, sheltered and locked away a little bit from this pandemic. They're doing their best. They're trying their best. And I have a daughter, and that's what I'm doing. Just trying my best, and doing my best. That's all we can do. But we can help each other by talking to each other, by listening to each other, and by cultivating our own path, our own love, our own light, our own faith. Because when we do for ourselves, we do for everyone else. I used to tell people, you really can't love anyone until you love yourself. Because I was in many relationships and we spoke of love, but I didn't really love myself. So how could I love another? I thought I did, but I was also under the influence of other things and I couldn't see clearly. Can I see perfectly clearly now? Who knows? <laughs> but I know it's clearer than it used to be. And that feels good. I don't get stuck on that, though. I just allow it to flow and allow it to be. And now I felt like talking about it. I don't always feel like talking about it. <laughs> but I feel that people should talk about it. Because it does help others. We have to help each other. We have to help each other grow, to be, to love, to live. That's what this life is all about. Thanks for listening today. I'm sure I'll have more to say in the future. <laughs> May you be well. May all beings in all the worlds be happy. May you be happy. May your family be happy. May your loved ones be happy. May your friends be happy. <laughs>